from the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation, Outdoor Oklahoma. Well, hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead. You know, no matter what type or level of fishing that you enjoy today, whether it be for stripers or bass or paddlefish or trout or catfish or whatever it is, it's likely that you can trace your fishing roots back to the simple bobber and worm for panfish. And today we're going to join Dan Martin and John McLean up on Fort Gibson and rediscover just how much fun pan fishing still is, no matter what your age. We're also going to take a look at the Wildlife Department's Shotgun Training Education Program and get a few shooting tips from a couple world champion shotgunners. But first, let's kick it off with some pan fishing at Fort Gibson. Yeah, yeah, we're on our way to a shore lunch here. Hello, my name is Dan Martin, and this is my story. I started off about 44 years ago. My very first trip, my grandpa took me on a bluegill fishing trip. I've been hooked, line, and sinker ever since. Well, folks, we're gone. Kind of sneak out here in the boat a little bit. We're gonna watch our depth finder here, our fish locator or depth finder, and we're gonna see if we can uh, spot a good area to set us set up on top of and see if we can catch some fish. Well, folks, we got John McLean here with us today, and I'm gonna kind of show him real quick here the kind of tackle that we're gonna be using today, and how you can set up uh, for your tackle for your fishing trip. Anyway, we're gonna use a real simple little slip bobber system, which is just a, a bobber stop with a real small bobber. First, you put your bobber stop on, and you just slip that right through there. Then you pull this down, pull the tube out of there, like so, and then you cinch it down real, real good. There's your bobber stop. You just take that, just snip off the ends of that, and don't, and remember, whenever you clip off any of your fishing line or anything like that, never throw it in the water. Always throw your trash and everything else in a bucket, anywhere where you can keep it and save it. And at the end of the fishing trip, then you get rid of, you know, then you throw it in the appropriate places, you know, in a, like in a trash can. Um, fishing line and things of that sort are just devastating on, uh, on our environment. And so, but uh, it's just one little key note there. Now we'll take this bobber. Hey, there we go. Now we tie our hook on. And I like to use real small little perch hooks, but with a long shank on them. Because a lot of times, those perch, some, sometimes, they'll swallow that hook to the point where you can't get them. So you use a longer shank hook and then you got something to grab onto. But you just tie a real simple little fisherman's knot on there. And that's all it takes. You can catch crappie on this. You can catch uh, perch. Um, well, I've even caught catfish and everything else on these things. But that's all you need. Just some hooks, some little slip bobbers, and uh, some split shot weights. And you're fishing. We've got some bait here, but we're going to set this bobber Right about 18 inches deep. And uh, you just slide that little bobber stop up your line. Set it right about 18 inches deep. And, uh, and we're gonna use red worms today. And this simple little red worm, hook that on. And I just got a little, about a number six hook on there. And again, with that little bit of a long shank. And I just thread that on there, just a little bit like that. And let it kind of wiggle around on there to entice the fish. All right. Here we go. One thing about these fish is you always want to be real careful. You see all these spines on there? Those spines will really get you, but they'll fold down. See how they fold down? So when you hold a fish, you always want to put it in the palm of your hand and hold it like that. That way you can't get finned. 
Because these little things, catfish, uh, catfish are a little bit different. I'll, if we get one of those, I'll show you how to hold those. These little push button reels are perfect for anybody. Anybody can use them. Uh, they cast real nice and, uh, and they're simple to use. That's the main thing. Another thing you always want to check before you start fishing is that your drag is set just about right. Because if your drag is too tight and you get a big fish on there, boy, he'll snap you right off in a heartbeat. He's just a big fighter. A lot of times, folks, when you, when you cast your line out, you want to let it set real still for a little bit. If you don't get a bite, just wiggle it a little bit, let it set again. Uh, you don't want to constantly be moving your line and pulling your line in. Uh, you want to let it set still and let that worm wiggle around a little bit. Another one. You got another one, John? Yeah. Hey, I was fighting pretty good. Oh. There he is. I like to see it when that bobber just goes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, here we go. Here we go. Now we may we may have a nice one here, folks. You hear that you hear that drag? Oh yeah, I think we got a pretty good one here. This may be one for table, for the table fair. All right. Well, we may not have to move after all. He's almost fighting like a catfish. <laughs> and it's a catfish. <laughs> hang on, hang on. <laughs> Look at this. Remember how I was telling you, you never know what you're going to catch right around in here. On these catfish, you got to be really careful. They have three spines. They have the dorsal and the two pectoral fins. The two stick out on the bottom and the one sticks out on the top, the dorsal fins on the top. If you put your hand and you grip them just like that, okay, see how they, that fin back here can't get you? And these two fins right here can't get you. That's the, about the only way to hold a catfish. And uh, this is just a little bitty one here, but hey, they're, uh, they're in the spawning mood. This is late spring, early summer, where it's about, you know, I think it's June 3rd today, matter of fact. But uh, they are spawning and, and they like to come up into these rocky areas. So one thing, if you ever do get finned by one of these, oh, splash. You'll take a little bit of that, that scum off their belly and rub that on the spot where you got finned and it will eliminate the sting. Well, it helps to eliminate the sting. There he is. Another one for good frying. Oh man, look at this. We're gonna have to go out and try some crappie. That was some crappies. Yeah, got one. You got a nice one too, man. Yeah. You're catching all the big ones here. And a good bluegill too. Yeah, look at this, John. Man. Pretty I fish. Think, I think uh, we're going to have to hire you on as the guide. <laughs> and I think I may have to hire on as the passenger. Yeah. I'm even trying to steal your spot here. Finally, I may have an eater. This one's not too bad. He's fighting a little bit. You know, we left the net back in the car. Thankfully, we haven't caught anything big enough yet where we're going to need a net. And if we catch, if we catch one big enough where we need a net, that's going to be a great day. I missed mine. Yeah, we almost had one more double here. Well, they're just picking my worm to pieces here. 
Look at this. That one's a nice chest for a big truck. Got one. Another Feels one? Feels like another good one, too. Another one for last year. Oh, I got one, too. Double. Another double. And like usual, <laughs> yours is beating the heck out of mine. Mine is, is yours little ba itty bitty baby brother. <laughs> John, I don't know. I think I'm gonna have to take you fishing more often. We're sitting here in a boat. You could have just as much fun as fishing right from the bank, couldn't you? Oh, yeah. You guys could bring your kids out, bring your children out, uh, and just have a grand old time. Proficiently being able to shoot a shotgun is considered one of the essential skills for any outdoor sportsman. And with any skill, there's certainly a right way and a wrong way to go about it. Several years ago, the wildlife department saw a need and created an educational program to teach people the basics of shooting a shotgun. It's called the Shotgun Training Education Program, or STEP for short. And today, the program is one of the most requested educational programs that the Wildlife Department offers. Today, we're going to visit with Ed Kunis, the program coordinator, as he catches up with two of our country's top competitive shotgunners, John Michael McGrath and Vincent Hancock. I'm Ed Kunis with the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation. I'm the Shotgun Training Education Coordinator, better known as STEP. In 1995, the department began a program to educate hunters that were caught up in the problem with the use of non-toxic shot in uh, wetland areas uh, while hunting waterfowl. The federal government uh, passed legislation that uh, required the use of non-toxic shot when shooting waterfowl and migratory birds. We started a program to educate those people uh, that use the non-toxic shot we started out with one trailer, one target machine or one trap machine, a few shotguns, and started using steel shot. We started with hunter groups and started the education program at that point. Today, in 15 years, it has grown to uh, proportions that we had no idea that would happen. Now, let go of the gun for a second. Check your feet. When you're standing like you're getting ready to uh, oh, let's say you're getting, getting ready to do something here, like, uh, show me how you are going to box. That's right. Okay, now bend this leg just a slight. Now you got better balance. See, look at me at this tilly here. You're going to have good balance like this, right? Now that's the way you're going to stand, okay? Now stick that to your shoulder. You got this right here like that, like your cheek touched the gun. Now, you're going to look down this barrel with your right eye. Last year alone, we had uh, um, 16,000, over 16,000 students, and now we have 10 trailers uh, strategically uh, located throughout the state of Oklahoma, and we have over 130 certified uh, instructors, which are all department employees. Um, now today, we work with, with hunter groups. We also work with youth groups. We do women-only programs, which is becoming more and more popular all the time. And uh, it's uh, turned out to be a very popular program. This program has caught on throughout the United States. And uh, quite often, I have other states that have called me and contacted me through the internet wanting to know how to get started in their state with a similar program. Schools have caught on to this program and have started uh, incorporating this shooting program as a school program. We work with FFA, that's one of our biggest, any group that wants to uh, learn about 
gun safety and the basics of shotgun shooting. If you have a group that wants to learn about uh, shotgun shooting or how to get started in shooting, you may call the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife and, uh, and we'll try to get you on a schedule. Cool. Hi, I'm John Michael McGrath. I represent the United States internationally in shooting competition. Let me tell you a little bit how I got started. I got started at Boy Scouts when I was 11. It was the first time I had ever shot a shotgun. I went to Boy Scout camp, tried it for the first time, found out I was pretty good. Four months after I started, I won a world championship. The most recent international win is that I won the 2010 Junior World Championships in Munich, Germany. We're here today at the Southern Hills Country Club in Tulsa, helping celebrate their 75th anniversary. And we're honored to have uh, two uh, world-renowned shooting sports specialists. And uh, to my left here is Vincent Hancock, and he's the uh, uh, latest Olympic gold medalist, uh, won the gold in Beijing, China. Hi, my name is Vincent Hancock, Olympic gold medalist. I got started shooting basically when I was about 10 years old. My father and my brother were competitive shooters, and uh, they both shot, or my dad was the 4-H coach, and my brother shot 4-H. So that's kind of how I got introduced into it. And when I was growing up, I started shooting 4-H SCTP, which is the Scholastic Clay Target Program. And there's, there's other places like that, uh, like the state program here in Oklahoma. Uh, there's all kinds of different programs that children can get started into and progress through and uh, you know eventually go to where I went, to the Olympics. So Vincent, um, I'd like to ask you if you could just convey uh, just uh, maybe just three or four tips for the average guy that goes out there and duck hunts or wing shoots uh, like you know during the during the fall seasons like during duck season or uh, dove season or something what would you what kind of advice would you give them well some of the biggest things that you can say to a to just an average day everyday hunter mm -hmm. is uh, the biggest thing is don't look at the barrel mm -hmm. you never want to look at it. it's not a it's not a rifle you don't want it you don't want to aim it you just want to look down and point and shoot mm -hmm. that's about as simple as it gets mm -hmm. and uh, what you want to look at is if it's a if it's a bird you know flying across you want to try to pick up the thing that it's that's flying in front so the beak Mm -hmm. or the head of it. Whichever you can pick out the best, that's what you want to try to shoot for. Mm -hmm. And uh, that right there will increase percentage by about tenfold on, on just the average day shooter. Okay. Well, I sure agree with that. John Michael, I got a question for you too. Okay. If you, um, let's talk about the gun itself. And uh, there's, there's a lot about buying and choosing a gun. And a lot of people, they go just out to the store and buy a gun, maybe because it looks nice, or maybe because it, it costs a lot, but there's more to it than that. Can you kind of maybe maybe bring up some important points about the gun itself? You make a great point. Uh, there's a couple things you want to look at when you uh, select a uh, gun, a shotgun, rifle, anything. Uh, the first thing you want to go off is uh, personal preference. Uh, does it feel good to you? Um, is it balanced correctly? Uh, uh, can you move, maneuver the gun correctly? Uh, you don't want to give uh, a, a younger student, uh, a younger hunter, uh, a gun with a 32-inch barrel that weighs 10 and a half pounds. So if you're interested in learning how uh, to use a gun, just give us a call and we will uh, we'll teach your group how to do this. Just call the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife and we'll work with you. Well, if you didn't already know it, John Michael McGrath proudly hails from Oklahoma, but he's not our state's only shotgunning superstar. Ed Kunis also recently received national recognition for his efforts to promote and educate people through the Wildlife Department STEP program. And well, for pan fishing, it may be as simple as it gets, but if your objective is to have a good time, then a bobber and a worm on a hook may be just the ticket. Plus, it's a great way to introduce someone new to the sport. Thanks for watching us today. To find out more about outdoor opportunities in Oklahoma, log on to wildlifedepartment.com. For all of us at your wildlife department, I'm Todd Craighead, and we'll see you right here next time on Outdoor Oklahoma.